Toby of the Week. Presenting the world premiere of an original motion picture produced especially for ABC. Tonight on the Movie of the Week. Four wrecks of track. Besides that, I jacked the guy's battery in the parking lot. Come to twenty-eight dollars and fifty cents. Twenty-eight fifty. Now that, uh, let me see. That'd yeah. be twenty-eight. There's fifteen for you Saturday. Oh, thanks, Jack. And I'll see you Monday. Hey, Lonnie, uh, you saving that Saturday pay? 
No, that can slips away of Saturday night. Well, I was just a thinking now. Uh, well, seeing as how you run the record at the races and everything, why, well, I was thinking maybe you'd like to buy her off of me. You know, be your own man. Well, I like working for you, Chet. Is anything wrong? No, no, listen, shoot, you've worked for me for six years now. Well, you're the best man I ever had. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking what with the wife and the kids and all, why, you might want to branch out, do something for yourself. No, everything is fine. It's what Crystal makes up the beauty part in my garage paper. We're doing just great. No reason to change anything, is there? No, guess there ain't no reason to change. Well, I see you Monday. Yeah, come on, kid. Let's go. Just for tonight, Grandma? Oh, ever Saturday. <laughs> all right, all right. You and Chris will go on and get drunk and make fools of yourself. Leave them here. I made up the bed already. Oh, I knew you was in a bad mood mm. the minute I saw you wearing your new teeth. Mm, I've been soaking them. I feel just fine now. Mm. Mm. Oh, go on, go <laughs> on. I see you want you to get drunk. Make a fool of yourself. Oh, Tell Crystal hello from my grandma. I'll do just that. Don't forget it. Yeah. I don't forget it. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, yeah, put them down. Grandma's got something for you. Yes. Oh, you have crab that boat in that night. Hi, Long. Sam. Crystal. She ain't been in today, Lonnie. I had to take a chair. She ain't here? Well, isn't this her Saturday? We was gonna meet and go out to the roadhouse. Well, honey, she just ain't been in. Hmm. Well, uh, thank you. She do that. I mean, I, I ain't got 
got no flat tires. Come on, Crystal, let's just get on something. Come on. Do you think you're going to drag me out of here like some kid playing hooky from school? You got another thing coming. Besides, I ain't doing a thing wrong. Listen, Crystal, you're my wife, and you're going to be with me. I work hard all week long. I work hard. And I expect to have a little bit of fun come Saturday night with my wife. I'm just having a few beers with some friends. I'll be home later. Crystal would like to celebrate with the winners. Can't be bleeding the little lady, can you, Lonnie boy? <laughs> Get on home, you chap. You're not going to be little your husband no more. Come on. Well, how can I make you any more no account than you already are? Now, why don't you get out of here so I can have some fun before I have to go back to that lousy trailer? And them screaming kids and you. Get yourself off. Get off. You think I finally do? I finally do know what's the matter with me. I've been with you. Harold. Harold, you get them beers. Because we. We are leaving. Let's go. See, honey, honey. Hey, so lady sure got his number. <laughs> Boy, you sure told her, buddy. Shut up! All of you, just shut up! If you don't want a beer bottle busted over your head, just shut up. <laughs> Come around the bend to the top!
Lonnie McAfee? Yes, sir. Mr. McAfee, I got to place you under arrest for the attempted murder of one Harold Duncan. Yes, sir. Going to put that shotgun down? Yes, sir. trouble in my life. Covered ain't so bad. You know the road. I've been there some total of 14 years off and on. What'd you draw? Four years. Good lawyer? Well, I don't know. He's a public defendant, Mr. Blum. I pleaded guilty. Because I was. I just turned near club to man to death. And they, uh, had you swear on the Bible so you naturally had to tell the truth, right? I'll pay my debt. Oh, I have seen them all now. You are green as a gourd. You've been had, boy. Yeah. Well, you just ought to take a look at old Harold. I'd like to see him sniff around some other man's wife with a face that looks like a plate full of hamburger. Well, I sure hope that that gives you a great deal of comfort in the next four long years. Pleading guilty, my God, boy. You sure ain't loaded with a bunch of smart, are you? From now on, you listen to old life. Oh, uh, Lyman Pouch is the name. <laughs> What's your gimmick? Huh? What's your con? What do you do, boy? Auto repair. I, I don't mean your straight gimmick. I mean, what are you gonna do to get along and go in prison? Well, they'll tell me that when I get up there, I reckon. No, no. <clears throat> Now you listen, and you listen good. I'm gonna show you the rope for a carton of cigarettes a week. Oh yeah, that's a medium of exchange in COVID, you know. Cigarettes well, they, they has to be bought. You think I'm just gonna turn over a carton of cigarettes to you? I don't smoke anyway. Now, now, now my gimmick is jewel pictures on velvet. Sell them to the guys, make a bundle. They frame them and hang them on the wall. Look real pretty. We'll find you a gimmick. <laughs> Yes, they're a carton a week and old Lyman shows the way. <laughs> you think that I'm some kind of a room? <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 boy, no. But you're gonna come crawling. And I'm a forgiving man. I'll be waiting. 
price will be the same. I got a horse, you know. What's that? <laughs> I got to thought that might interesting. That's a guard. Works for me. Yeah. I pay him, and uh, he does me a little favors. <laughs> right there in prison? Sure. That doesn't sound very likely. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you got one hell of a lot to learn. Oh, howdy. Is your first time in Coven prison? Sure. Work your fool head off, get nowhere. It's because you won't pay the guards off like us smart fellas do. What do you expect? Yeah, two pairs. Well, you've done it again. Cleans you out. Ain't that a shame? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been able to buy toothpaste for two weeks. No cigarettes for trading. Well, I, listen, I could, I could give you a little loan. I do that for some of the fellas, you know. Oh, yeah. Of course, I can advance you a month's pay, but it's going to be a little interest involved, like uh, four packs of cigarettes. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be of service to an old buddy. <laughs> Materials, Lyman. <laughs> that galls you, don't it, boy? You know why it galls you? Because you ain't getting a piece of the action. You better start bending a little, boy, or you're going to break. We'll break you. Everybody here's got you picked as a patsy. You being taken left and right. But I warned you, didn't I? OK, so what do I have to do? Well, you're into me so far now, you ain't never gonna get out. I, uh, I could set you up and then take half the profits. How are you gonna set me up? <laughs> well, I, I can't take you in with me, because that requires a lot of artistic ability. And uh, Bobo's already got the pornographic books sold up. Don't want you to pet on those drugs, because them pushers is the ones that wind up dead in the can. Uh, you, uh, musical at all, boy? Well, I <laughs> used to sing a song or two. two packs of cigarettes and ten dollars for the cassette. You know, on the outside, he was a professional songwriter down in Nashville, Tennessee. Lonnie, yeah. Lonnie, this young man wants you to write one of them fine original songs for him and dedicate Where? it to his girl. That's right. Well, what is the young lady's name? Uh, uh, Viola. 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 Uh -huh. that, that'll be ten dollars, please. Oh, you bet I got it right here. Yeah. Got the cigarettes, too. There you go. I think I got it. Uh, would you just hold this microphone yeah, right. for me? Uh, just about right there. That'll do it fine. My darling Viola, I am lonely. I'm trapped here in these prison walls. If you were here, I'd give you love. Can't you see how my Now, now, I want you to wait for me, and uh, I want you to try to stay out of trouble, too, you hear? 
Now, that song you just heard was all about me right here in Colvin, and it was writ by a professional songwriter. Now, how about that? Ain't that something, huh? <laughs> How many of them tattoos have you drawn, do you suppose? Nobody leaves Colvin without a tattoo. I knew I'd get around to you sooner or later. How do you say you spell them names again? L-E-S-T-E-R and C-L-I-F-F-O-R-D. Them's my boys, and I want one right over the other one, right there in that heart. Okay. How'd you like to have a nice rose with your wife's name in it? Or maybe your girlfriend? Do you ever know of a woman with the name of Crystal? Uh-uh. I think that's the prettiest woman's name that I ever heard, is Crystal. You done broke up with her? Uh, she's dead. You know, she was never much good at all, and she used to just give me fits running around with other men, but... You know, the longer that I am in this place, the more that I think about Crystal. That's only natural. What else is there to think about around here? I just never appreciated that one. Hmm. Maybe it's because that I had to marry her. I got her into trouble just before I went over to Vietnam. But I never regretted it. I never resented her, never lost my respect for her. No. Well, I thought I had it made. Good living, nice trailer, two boys. <laughs> And you ought to see my boys there's something else. Mm. You know, they're just little fellas, but you can tell right now that they're they're going to be real top athletes. They got all the moves. Mm. <laughs> and then one night, she just turned me into some kind of a nut and ended me up in this place. Well, it'll do that to you. Hey, how about another one on the other arm? You got anything for luck? Yeah, fix you right up. from the stock car races here. Yeah, I do. Really, really. I know them real well. Well, what do you know? Them's the Lauder sisters. Oh, come on. Yeah. See that one in the middle? That's Baby. Baby Lauder. My God, isn't she a pretty good thing? She's just about the prettiest little woman I've ever seen. just as much about those machines as any old Harold Duncan. I'm not going to be trailing around after Chuck at that garage for a handful of pennies, neither. My eyes have been open. Oh, tell me about it. First night out, I'm going to nail me that little B.B. Lover. <laughs> Maybe your sisters, too. <laughs> They're going to be begging this old boy to come back for more. Yeah, Lonnie. I suppose you're going to write us and tell us about all them lotter women for a fact, huh? Yeah, that's a promise. Yeah, ain't the same as being there. Lonnie Mac, in a year's time, you're going to be right back here in Colvin with your tail tucked between your legs, so why don't you shut up? Oh, what do you know, three-time loser? I'll tell you one thing I know, a man is what he is, and all that big talk don't make life no easier. You're a loser, Lonnie, just like me. You're a loser. Long hard road, and you know he does the best he can. Oh, 
boy and gambles all of his tomorrow on the faith that one day he will be a man. Rolled and strong, but he's a rolling wrong. He's a victim of his dream. Of someone else's scheme Rolling high But he's on rolling by Look tonight you'll find him On some lonesome country road Rolling home Lester Clifford, you home? Grandma, you in? It's Lonnie come home. Lonnie? Who? I'm oh, back here in bed. Oh, so you got out. How was the army, Larry? Uh -huh. You want a soda pop? Huh? I'm not Larry, Grandma. This is Lonnie. You know me. I was the ones in prison, not the army. I'm your granddaughter, Crystal's husband. She's dead. She's dead these four years. My boys. Where are my boys, Grandma? Larry. You tell me about the army, huh? You was to take good care of them. They're your great grandkids. Oh. Oh, let's don't care for their fun. I won't let nothing happen to me. They're fine. Where are you, I couldn't do no better on it. I was took of a stroke. Okay. Who are you to talk? What you ever do for them little tigers? Or for my poor baby Crystal? I want my boys. Now. Let's go. I gave them to my cousin Sly and his wife, Mildred. They're good people. Three little ones are their own. But they took Lester and Clifford to Ben's family and all. Where does Sly live now? Oh. Oh, they, they left the country. Going somewhere west in their car and U-Haul to look for work. Sly got himself laid off. Oh, terrible time. He just took my boys? Yes. He promised he'd take care of them. What could I do? I needed help. I sold all your trailer stuff a long time ago to feed him. He's gone. And your bird dog, too. He was run over by the oil truck years ago. I buried him in the backyard. He buried me, too. Hey, Chuck, I done it all. You want me to clean up the grease pits before I go? Yeah, yeah, they, that'd be, that'd be just fine. Glad to see you out, Ronnie. I, uh, had to get a new boy to take your place. Oh, that's all right, Chuck. I didn't come back for no little old job like this. 
No, the old boy didn't come back to take no job away from no new boy. I'm not running errands for nobody no more. Well, gee, that's just great, uh, Lonnie. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, good luck. Uh, Lonnie, I always did like having you work for me. Honest, I did. Well, I ain't working for anybody anymore. Now and they're going to be working for me. Rolling wild, just like some angry child. Tell the life from just one try. Well, go ahead. Go on and say it. Don't worry about it. Prison. <laughs> yeah, but I'm out now. Paid my debt. First thing that was on my mind was to look you out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's awful nice. I'm, I'm real flattered. Yeah. <laughs> well, will you look at those tattoos? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got those in prison. But they're real artistic. Yeah, you can feel them if you want to. Really? Yeah, go on. Go ahead. You look like you might be ready for some cold beer, some hot ribs, and good fast dancing. Well, I really ought to be eating dinner with my sisters After tonight. After I come all this way? Hmm? Just to see you? Be spending so much money on me, you just be like, Oh, shoot, money doesn't mean nothing to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what? I've, I've had my eye on you for a long time. Mommy. Yeah, kind of got me through those years. <laughs> it was hard then, huh? Uh, not really. <laughs> Heck, I, I spent more time in the army when you get right down to it. <laughs> no, I. It was kind of good for me, baby. It, it opened my eyes up to a lot of things. What's up to now? Oh, I'm going to get into stock car racing and make a bundle. That's easier said than done. Yeah. You know, the trouble is that I, uh, I just lost touch with, uh, with all the people. Their faces have changed. You know what would be a good thing? Just think of it. What if you gave me a... Put in a good word for me, seeing as how you work the stock car races. Well, Molly, I, I'm not much of a talker, you oh. know. I, I don't really know how to ask favors of people. I don't think I'd be no help. Oh, of course you would. Let me explain something to you, baby. You see, I need, I need a sponsor. I need somebody to underwrite me in a car. But if I go up to them, they're going to look at me kind of funny. I'm the guy who just got out of prison for almost killing a man. Boy, I'll tell you, that Harold Duncan, <laughs> he just bad-mouthed me something terrible around the racetrack. I need somebody who'll speak up for me. So that's what all the beer and ribs is for, huh? No, no, no. Well, I'll tell you something, Ronnie. You're gonna have to find yourself somebody else to get you into the stock car races for a couple of bucks worth of beer and a few hours of sweet talk. Baby, so you you just don't want to have anything to do with dirty your hands with the next convict. I ain't ashamed to help you. Well, baby, I I thought that you was a a special kind of person, but you're you're just no different than anybody else. I just don't to like you butting in here and, and using me, Lonnie. You take a lot for granted. You know, baby, I've I've had you on my mind for four years. 
saying good night to you every night myself. Do you have any idea at all what that that means to a man, huh? Do you really? That's that's alone. You know what it means to be sweet talked and lied to and propositioned by every two bit driver and mechanic on the circuit, huh? They all buy me beer and ribs too, you know. I thought about you too, Lonnie. I liked you ever since I was a kid and used to watch you play football. I thought you was different, but you're not. You're just like the rest of them. Well, I don't want any of your kind, Lonnie. So why don't you just get out of here? I got no time for you. Go on, Lonnie, please just get out of here. Well, maybe. That's what's in your heart. You know, it's not my my nature to apologize, but I, I really got to get something straight with you. Forget it. No, baby, please. I, I admit that, that I was I was trying to pull a big line on you in there. I admit that. Uh, see, I've seen other other guys do that, and I guess I'm not too good at it. I didn't feel right doing it, and I know that it must have offended you. And, uh, but I want you to know that I do respect you. It's just that, well, I, I just didn't know which way to turn. I'm, I'm truly sorry. You didn't need to come on like that, Lonnie. That ain't coming to no man. It's just, I just can't be around a woman no time at all without sticking my big foot in my mouth. Well, I tell you, it takes a big man to stay around and wait just to say sorry like that. I, I appreciate it. I I really am sorry, baby. I, I, I just wouldn't have asked for help or anything at all from you if I... Uh, I just need the money so bad to find my kids. You see, when I was up to Coven, they, they was took out west with uh, the Sly family, and there's just no way that I can find them if, if I'm broke. And I know that I could make a bundle if I could just get a race car under me. Oh, Lonnie. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember you little fellas. Now, why didn't you say that? Of course I'd help you find them any way I could. Oh, baby, that's... that's really nice. I... <sighs> could I walk you to your camper? Would that be all right? I'm, you know, you can run into some rough customers around the racetrack. <laughs> That'd be nice, thank you. Where are you staying? Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to tell you that I was staying up that big siesta motel, you know, just to impress you. <laughs> but the uh, truth is, I I spent my last buck on them ribs and this, this shirt. Well, now, you can't very well go sleeping out in the grass in a pretty new shirt like that, can you? I'll tell you what, Lonnie. Now that we understand each other better, if you want to, you can sleep there in the cab of the truck tonight. Oh, well, that's real nice of you, baby. And I won't be no trouble. Hey, how about that laundry? The one that sponsored, uh, uh, old Buck, what's his name? You know, the guy that died. Right. Well, I do know the man over there, Lonnie. I just sort of hate to ask him, you know? Well, honey, you gotta get over that. I mean, we'll just go over there tomorrow morning and you'll talk him into it. I mean, who could resist a pretty little face like yours, huh? <laughs> Boy, you sure know all the right things to say, don't you? All right. Whatever you want. Well, you're just a sweet, sweetheart. You're just all sugar, you know that? <laughs> oh, Lonnie. Lonnie. It's different with me, isn't it? I'm not like Crystal at all. I'd never do to you what she did. Well, honey, I know that. I'll always be there for you. Whenever you need me. 
You need me, don't you, Lonnie? Well, of course I need you, baby. You know that I need you. Hey, don't you worry about nothing. You hear? I'll get you into the stock car races somehow. And we're gonna find your boys. And I'm gonna stick by you. Oh, yeah. Got um, chili and eggs if you want some lunch. Oh, well, I think I'll just uh, have a hot cup of coffee, whole wheat bran muffin if you got it. You got uh, thirty-five cents on you? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. I sure didn't think so, cause I can spot him at fifty feet. Want me to leave? Business stinks, and I'm here all by myself. Why don't you just stay, and I'll tell you what, I'll spring for the food. You, uh, you just bumming, or are you running from the law? Just working my way west. Huh. Oh, yeah, huh? Me too, except I've been at it 15 years now. Oh, thank you. I don't intend to take that long. Well, you just see this starlet? Where is she? Oh, that's the one right there. You see that starlet? Yeah. Well, I look just like that when I started out. Because I had all that it took. You're an actress. That's right. I 
won a beauty contest in Memphis, Tennessee in June 1956. And then I headed straight for Hollywood. You know, in the bright lights. What stopped you? Oh, I ain't stopped yet. I'm gonna make it still. I'm just slinging a hash and tending bar to save my money. Of course, I have worked my way up to more mature parts. But then, I mean, look at all of the big actresses over 30. You just take a look. Go on now, you look like a man with a good eye. Oh, stuff is still there yet, huh? Looks okay to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I could have gotten married a dozen times because I always did appeal to men, but I don't know, I just, um, I just got my heart set on acting. What you looking to do, huh? I'm a race car driver. That's something that is exactly where I would have placed you. Yeah? Uh, you got the look of a race car driver. Yeah? Yeah, I know. Strong and sure and cocky. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, honey, what is it like being behind that wheel and having that ton of steel at your control? Oh, well, that's really something. First of all, you take it out kind of nice and easy, right? And then you got to... Watch the guy on your right, the guy on your left, the guy in front of you, the guy behind you. It's, that's really something. You, uh, you gonna be uh, staying around here long? Well, I don't know. None of you ever do. But that's all right, because... I don't love you, and you sure don't love me. But I'm, uh, I'm just so, I'm just so lonely. And when you come in on me, I said to myself, there's a lonely man. <laughs> Boy, that's the truth. That's why I knew you'd like to play my game. You see, you can, you can stay a day or you can stay a couple of weeks, it don't matter. Just as long as you're here, I pretend that you're my man and and I'm the woman that you always pictured and and uh, and I'm a movie star actress just stopping off on her way to a big movie contract and you're a racing man and you're on your way to a Grand Prix race or something. Don't that sound beautiful? How many times did you play that game? I don't think that I could stand to look at this dump another day on myself in the mirror if I didn't pretend. You've got to be a pretender, too, or else... How do you keep going? Well, I just don't hold with pretending life is real and you've got to take it as it comes. Sure, honey. Tell me about racing. Tell me about... Tell me about the thrills and the money, and, and I'm going to tell you about my next movie picture. Oh, hush. Just hush. Just... Just tell me how beautiful life is. Tell me how everything's going to be perfect. Come on. Come on, pretend. Don't leave me lonely tonight. Well, I'm this big race car driver. And that's one heck of a profession. And I got myself this big Dodge, and I went all of a sudden circuit. And every time I go across the finish line, something happens inside of me. I'm just a new person. It's just gets in my blood. Hello? Hello, listen, I'm sorry, but I'm closed for New Year's Day. What? Lonnie? Where are you, boy? Hey, you sure left yourself some hard feelings over yonder at the racetrack. That little B.B. Lauder's been around here ever... Every week or so asking about you. 
You ain't in trouble, are you? No, no, no. Listen, I, I'm doing real good. I got myself a, a big job. Singing professionally in a, in a sort of a nightclub. Ain't that something? <laughs> huh? Imagine me, a, a professional entertainer, huh? Look, uh, Chuck, I, uh, I can't talk too long. I've got some friends that are waiting. We're going to take in one of them big bowl games today. Hey, ain't that great? You know, I'm fixing to watch them on television myself. Maybe you'll be in the crowd. Your boys, no, I ain't heard nothing special about them, except Mama did get a Christmas card from that sly woman. Yeah, Mildred. Yeah, I think it was postmarked from Amarillo, Texas. Yeah, sure, I'll go get you the return address. That was the Lazy Acres Motel in Amarillo? And, and she didn't say nothing about the boys, huh? Nothing at all. Well, look, Chuck, I, uh, I'm gonna have to go now. I, it's been real nice talking to you. Oh, listen, listen, Chuck, if, if uh, B.B. comes around again, well, you can tell her that I'm doing real good, but uh, just, just don't tell her where I'm headed, okay? Yeah, goodbye. What's that for? I fixed you some sandwiches for the road. Oh. That's real nice. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you in Hollywood sometime. For what? Oh, uh huh. View, Viewport, Arkansas. Uh huh. Hold on, sugar. Happy New Year. My name is Lonnie McAfee. I'm, I'm looking for the Sly family. Christmas card said they was here. Well, I'm Mildred Sly, and I'm here. Oh. Well, I, I come from my boys, Clifford and Lester. Oh, sure, Lonnie McAfee. Yeah, McAfee. McAfee. I thought you were in prison. I'll take my boys now. Well, well now, listen, Mr. McAfee. You see, I'm, I'm stuck here with my own kids. Billy! Well, get away from there! No school on the holidays, and I gotta keep them here with me. The manager don't like it one bit. Oh, uh, Mrs. Sly, I'm. I came to pick up my boys. Where are they? They're not here. They're not? They're okay. You see, my husband and I were heading for work in California in the airplane factory. It was hard, Mr. McAfee. No money. We took in them boys out of the pure goodness of our hearts, and we loved the dear things. But halfway out, the money went, and we phoned ahead and found out there wasn't no job waiting, and, well, it all boiled up, and Billy left me and the kids here. Well, We're divorcing, but it was coming a long time. Do you, do you know where my boys are? Well, I, I was just so sick of everything. I placed them with this nice family we were traveling with. They're good Christian folk, and they were very happy to take little Clifford and Lester. You gave them away? Well, I never heard from you. I didn't know nothing about the circumstances. Just that the old lady was dying back in you Viewport and Cornwall. You just boys away? Look, I'm a divorced woman now with three of my own and only this piddly job. Why don't you take care of your own? Well, who took them? Where'd they go? 
family name of Maynard, Wilbur and Lily Maynard. They were pickers, you know, followed the crops. They said they were heading for the oranges in California, in the Imperial Valley. Oh, maybe I should have gone with them. Well, I sure don't see your old man giving your own kids away. I don't see that. Now, happening just at all. a minute! My husband is long gone. But before you go condemning me and Billy Sly, let me tell you that for six months, them little boys went to bed of a night calling my husband daddy. And they pretend he was when they fell down and he picked them up, or when they come down with a fever and he sat up with them. Them little boys wanted a daddy so bad they pretended he was it. And he ain't no easy man to tolerate, believe me. So you just start thinking about that when you take good people to task. By know. golly, I've been looking for you in Everett Grove in this part of California. You are a sight for so right. <laughs> I've never seen nobody so glad to see me except maybe a bill collector. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Lonnie McAfee. I come from a boys. Boys? Yeah. A boys, Clifford and Lester. Ones you took off the Sly family. Oh. Oh, mister, I I'm sorry. Uh, them two was too hard on my missus. Uh, they was so unhappy they run away about no! three weeks ago. No! Tell me they run off! What'd you do to them? Nothing. I, I swear. One morning they was gone. And there was no work up there and up north where we was. They wouldn't have just run off. What'd you do to them? Nothing. I swear. Now, listen. I don't want no trouble with no man who's been to prison. I'm a mean killer. I'm a mean killer. I don't deserve no sons. I don't deserve nothing. I don't deserve no wife. No life at all. Nothing. I don't deserve nothing. Not fair! It's not fair! Damn it! Get damn it out of the house! Lonnie! Hey, Lonnie! How'd you find me? Well, I followed the same trail you did. I know you told Chuck not to tell me where you were, but I asked him and he told me anyway. I came out here looking for the Maynards and your boys, and I figured I'd find you too. They're gone. <laughs> oh, Lonnie. Lonnie, now, honey, it's gonna be all right. <laughs> Lonnie, it's gonna be all right. We'll find them. I'll help you find them. I will, honey. Come on now. It's all right. I suppose that you want me to, to tell you that I'm sorry for the way that I left. No, don't. Because I'd probably just start to cry and then you'd feel bad. Maybe I don't understand you. Honey, look at this. Look, at, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to print up maybe 200 of these circulars describing Clifford and Lester. And I put my name here at the bottom in a, in a post office box right here in town. That way we can track down every, every lead that we get. Oh, honey, this is going to work. I know it is. You know, we can put these things in every diner and gas station and work camp around here, and I know that somebody is going to spot those boys. My I... boys is gone. I'm not going to find my boys now. Don't you give up hope. I'll never give up hope. I've been laying here doing me some thinking. I just realized it's all gone. All started with Harold Duncan. <laughs> oh, 
Phoebe, do you realize what that man's got in his hands? Huh? Racing titles. Racing titles. Big cars, big sponsors, a whole ball of wax. Hell, I saw the other day in a newspaper where he was going to race over at that Ontario Raceway. Oh, my God, that's that's the big time. Lonnie, what difference does it make for heaven? Man's got everything. I got nothing. Nothing at all. Was that fair? He's the one that took it all away from me. Is that fair? There's nothing fair about it. I just now realized what the hell it is I've got to do. I'm going to kill it. Lonnie, for God's sake, get that idea out of your head. My wife and my boys is both gone, and he's going to pay for it. And I wouldn't be no kind of a man at all if I didn't do what I know is right. No, no, Lonnie, you can't. He's going to die. No, Lonnie, Lonnie! Lonnie, this is the last time you're walking out on me. Okay, Mr. Ducky, we'll take her on a few times, get right. the feel the track. You going to get the number one post position in the time trials today? If I have anything to do with it, Mr. Ducky. Hey, you my boy. Well, what do you know, old Lon McAfee? Yeah, that's right. That's a real sweet-looking car you got there, Harold. Why don't we just get in and take a spin around the track? I'd like to see how it goes. Let's just get in the car. Look at this car! 
I just now got it made. You can't blow it for me on now. Lord, I've done wrong. I know I've done wrong. And I'm feeling it inside, Lord. Please, Lord. I don't want to die. Maybe someday I'll die to restrict, but my God, Lord, don't blow my guts out. I didn't. I wouldn't put it. Lonnie, did you, did you do it? Did you? Uh, I didn't shoot him. All this time thinking that Harold Duncan was a big man. He, he's just not worth it, baby. He's not worth nothing. And I am worth something. Oh, I... <laughs> Lonnie, I Is that <laughs> <Lester>? <laughs> you fellas. My golly! Boy, you fellas are really grown. You remember your pa? Phoebe found us. She did. She found you, huh? What was she doing? Picking berries? Huh? <laughs> You'll find out a few things as you grow up, you listen to your daddy. I used to think that just because I was a good, honest man that I had it made. No siree, you've got to work for it. Life will squash you like a tin can under a semi unless you, you open up your eyes and you find out what kind of a fight that you're in. And we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Hell, boy, this is America. Tonight you'll find them rolling on some country road, rolling is a 72 Ford pickup, the one that works like a truck, rides like a car. Ford's the pickup with a cat-quick response and easy handling and a big, roomy, comfortable cab with exclusive features like twin I-beam independent front suspension to smooth out the bumps. Now, you shouldn't treat your truck like this, but a Ford's built super tough to take on even the most rugged jobs. See your Ford dealer for a pickup. Works like a truck, rides like a car.